What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be having another look at the grip attachment in COD World War II. For those of you guys that were around my channel during the beta of this game, I did do some testing on there, and I concluded that the grip attachment really wasn't helping too much, not to a very noticeable extent. It seemed to help very, very slightly, kind of like we've seen in the past several years of Call of Duty, but it wasn't like a night and day difference between having no grip and grip attached. Since the launch of the game, I've had a ton of people daily asking me to retest the grip and see if they changed anything from the beta and see if it's worthwhile to use. So today we're going to be looking at some new recoil tests that are a little bit more precise and everything, and we'll be seeing just how effective the grip is in the full build of the game. So the first thing to be aware of before we get into these recoil tests is recoil within Call of Duty is randomized within a certain range. Because of this, we're never going to get perfectly consistent recoil patterns. This is why I do three recoil tests per gun, and even then, three tests isn't the best sample size out there. Realistically, I would like to see hundreds or even thousands of tests to make any really solid conclusions on this, but that's simply not realistic for hand testing. We kind of have to go with what we have, and at least three recoil tests gives us a little bit of an indication, and hopefully we'll be able to see some trends with these tests. So I'm not going to bore you with watching every single one of these recoil tests and everything. I'm mainly just going to be showing you guys the results of those recoil tests and try to present them in a very easy to view format. But keep in mind, I just took a selection of weapons in the game. I didn't test every single weapon because that's simply not practical time-wise. I don't have that much time in a day to be doing that, even though I do spend almost all of my day making videos. But I tried to select a decent variety in types of weapons. So we've got like a semi-auto rifle, we've got a full auto rifle, we've got a few different SMGs in there, we got an LMG mixed in there, just a decently wide variety of weapon types. So first up, let's have a look at the M1928 or the Thompson. With this one, with no grip, you can see there, it kicks pretty much up and to the right fairly consistently. Then we pop the grip on there, and as you can see, we got one pattern that looked like it was pretty much the same as the previous pattern. The second pattern was almost no recoil at all, that was quite surprising to see. And then the third pattern kicked almost straight right, and it went right off of our recoil plot. So relatively inconsistent here, but it does appear that there is a bit of a reduction with that grip attachment. The problem with this is it's just extremely inconsistent. As for the PPSH, with no grip, you've got pretty much straight vertical recoil, a little bit of side-to-side -side sway, not too much, but you can see it reaches that maximum magnitude, and it doesn't go any higher than that. When you put the grip attachment on there, it seems like that magnitude stays exactly the same, which makes sense because usually they aren't affecting the magnitude values, like the grip attachment won't affect your magnitude. And also, just in general, it seems to be a very similar type of recoil. I don't really see much difference between having no grip and having that grip attached. Moving on to the third SMG that I tested for this, this is the Waffa 28. With this one, it generally kicks pretty much vertically, but sometimes it kind of takes over and kicks to the side. With this one, if anything, comparing no grip to the grip recoil tests, it just shows how inconsistent this gun can be. You never know what it's going to do, regardless of whether or not you have that grip attached. As for the M1 Garand, the M1 Garand has basically zero side-to-side -side sway whatsoever with its recoil. It always kicks almost perfectly vertically, and as you can see here, it's got a varying level of magnitude. Keep in mind, I was reaching the fire rate cap with every single one of these tests. And as you can see here, it does seem like we do get a bit of a reduction with grip, but at the same time, that's more so when you have sustained fire and you're firing the entire clip with the M1 Garand. Realistically, if we're just looking at the first two to three shots that are fired, which is generally all you're going to need to get a kill, grip doesn't really seem to be doing a whole lot for you there. As for the BAR, as you can see here, this is actually where I saw the biggest difference, but just keep in mind, like I said, this could just be down to the fact that I got lucky with some of these recoil tests and unlucky with other ones. I would love to see a larger sample size on this, but it does look pretty convincing here that the grip attachment is helping quite a bit on the BAR. So finally, I tested one of the LMGs. This is the MG15. It's got a decent amount of recoil, but just keep in mind with this, I did only use 20 rounds for my recoil test. So what I did, even though it has a 50 round magazine, it's kind of useless to see sustained fire for a whole 50 rounds. So I emptied out 30 rounds and then I shot at the wall and then I emptied out 30 rounds and then I shot at the wall. I did that consistently for every one of these tests. So you can see the trend with this one is it generally kicks vertically pretty strong and then it tends to drift a little bit to the right. Without grip, you can see with that middle test, the horizontal recoil really took over and it kicked really hard to the right and it's all over on top of my third recoil test at that point. 
Whereas with the grip attachment, we didn't see that. Again, just could have been a fluke. We don't really know. However, I will say it looks like according to these tests, at least with the grip attachment, you get a bit more consistency with the MG15. And those are all the weapons I decided to test for this. Overall, it's really hard to draw any sort of a strong conclusion from these tests. There's no doubt in my mind that the grip attachment is working as intended. We just don't know which recoil value it's affecting. Is it affecting our view kick, our center speed, some form of gun kick, or a combination of those? We don't really know, but what I do know is the recoil in this game tends to be so inconsistent that you never know what you're going to get regardless of whether or not you have that grip on there. As a result, I don't see myself ever using the grip attachment on any one of the classes in this game. Whether you have that grip attachment on there or not, you're never going to be certain what kind of recoil you're going to be getting every time you pull the trigger. As a result, I would much rather be using other attachments that I know are working very consistently. And with that, I'd like to know what you guys think of these results in the comment section below. Do you guys still think the grip is worthwhile using, or did this kind of open your eyes and make you start changing up your classes, assuming you used grip in the past? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.